Hi everyone, so today I'm going to work on this tonic die set I've had for a little bit. Uh, it's the Hampy Hamper Gift Box die set. Super cute. Um, it's funny that I've been wanting to work on this. I had it sitting here so I can remember to work on that next. And it is actually part of Tonic's sales right now for like their Wednesday sales. It goes in and out of sale. So uh, right now I think it's a bundle with the other one that came out when this came out. It's like a taller hamper or basket. Basically hamper means basket. <laughs> and um, so I'll have that link in the description box and those links will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you purchase items to those links. So it's good timing. I think what I'm going to do is like a basic construction, so I'll probably not use the inlay dies, but we'll talk about them. I'll probably just use some pattern paper. I'm thinking about maybe using some hunky dory paper, something uh, super sturdy like that too, just for funsies. We'll see. But let me open this up and we'll take a look. Some of you know, sometimes the packaging is like this on tonics. Sometimes if it's a showcase, it usually comes in the plastic uh, pocket with the uh, magnetic sheet. It just depends on how they're presenting it or whatever. Um, so this was one of their releases, but it wasn't a showcase. So it wasn't like packaged up, you know, more deluxe. <laughs> so we have this and it is a large die. So on the outside of the packaging, it usually tells you that largest die and a lot of times it'll say that in the description but sometimes it's hard to know they're saying it's uh 245.5 millimeters by 172 millimeters and roughly you know you can do the math on that but it's 10 inches by 6.7 now the last time i saw that i was like oh, okay cool but then when i actually measured the die the die was bigger so i don't know if that means the largest cut but we do want to know die size right because if your machine won't fit it that's not going to work so i'm looking at the very edge of the die to what I would consider the edge of it over here. I would say six and three quarter inches in this direction. And the width, you can see this one, he's from over here all the way to over here. So I'm gonna put my ruler here and you guys can kind of judge yourself there. That looks like 10 and a half, almost 11 inches in this direction. So either your width or this way, hopefully your machine can accept it this way. And then the length doesn't really matter that much, right? But just wanna give you those numbers because again, it is different from what it says on the packaging. So, um, and then, okay, so I mean, that's the, the main die. I guess I can take this off. Finally, I didn't rip this off. So what happens is with these guys, it has this cover and it has like a little slit down here that notches into here. And a lot of times I end up ripping that off because I don't remember it. I pull it out. And then I love this with this kind of thing where it has the instructions on the inside. So again, I just keep these things together. I'll pop it right back in that same packaging and then put it in like, um, it depends. Sometimes I'll put them on a magnetic sheet, but like this one, since it has the information and everything, put it back in its sleeve that it came in and then I have them like in a milk crate kind of thing and you can just go like this and go through and find the one I want. Um, the other ones I have them in like the tonic binders of course. So that's the largest die and I'm assuming you're going to need two of these because that's just how this packaging usually works right with these kind of things. One on this side and one on this side. It's going to come up like this and then we have our little lid if you look at the image. So it's just those things, the lid and the strap. You don't have to put the lid if you don't want. You can put the lid. There's inlays. There's all kinds of things. So let's look at that. So for this one, since this has just this one space, it is one large inlay uh, die. A lot of times they'll include a couple different ones, but I think the packaging didn't allow for that. So we have this one. So we have a matte layer. This is the outer one. This is an inlay. So you can do a background plus the inlay or just use the background one for some pattern paper, which is what I'm going to do today. Whatever is it you like. The side pieces, again, uh, matte and then inlay. And what I mean by inlay is, if you've watched any of my videos, and a lot of times people are new, they haven't, or or maybe they're new to crafting. This die will cut a matte by itself, right? But if you run that die plus this one, tape them down to your paper, you're going to have this cut out of your paper. So it looks like this. But, I mean, this is something that happens quite often in die cutting so you're probably familiar um for the top part this is the top part of the little hamper you have your lid and then the lid has a matte layer it has and actually it has little grooves so you know exactly where to put it which is really nice little divots that's awesome so this inlay says something very fancy a little something just for you i love that and then uh, or we have little patterns so you can inlay this pattern you have another matte layer you have this one that's also its own little layer how cute is that? Like a little doily. We have this one that has like a little zigzag print. We have this one. All these cut their own layer. The only one that's inlay is this guy. And on the inside, we have another one that's a matte that has little dots. Like this one has like a cute little pattern. And then this piece that I'm assuming probably does something because it has a score line in the middle. So we're probably going to use that for something. Uh, a little more decoration for your strap areas. Again, buckle. 
also has like a little decoration, buckle pieces, side pieces, uh, matte layers, maybe it's another piece that you actually need. This is something else that also obviously is part of the mechanism or however you need to do it. Look at this. Oh, you know what this is? Okay, I'll talk about it in just a minute. And then this one's like a little oval die that looks like this one, but decorative. So we have that too to play with. And then the little slats for like all these other areas to decorate. Again, this is an inlay for that same kind of like inner area there. And um, this. I'm like, well, where, where would you put that? So on here, look at here. I noticed they have these little guys. These are paper beads. And that's what this makes for you. So pretty cool just a little something different I mean I haven't made one of those in a long time so it's nice to have a little die and basically I'm just telling you here you use a skewer something to put in the center put glue all over and just roll it up and you have your little paper bead right um, so that's pretty cool okay so let me grab some papers and we'll just get right to it I mean this is I think it's gonna be pretty simple to be honest but okay. I will be right back okay. so I grabbed some cream colored heavyweight cardstock this stuff I believe is like the ultra heavy or extra heavyweight whatever they call it at Hobby Lobby it's just their cream colored one and then I grabbed this pack because so pretty from um, Hunky Dory again whenever I'm showing papers like this especially with Hunky Dory it's either I found it it's out of stock now or something weird if I can find it I'll link it but you know obviously pull out the beautiful things you have in your stash um, whenever it comes to papers I know a lot of times people say oh where'd you get that I'm like oh I don't know it's like 10 years old <laughs> especially it's just you know unless it's like a new collection I'm reviewing or something then you know obviously we can link it but other than that a lot of times it's just whatever you got bringing that out it's great um, okay so if we look at the instructions we need two of this big guy and two of the belt right and then from there it just kind of gets a little a little uh, just do whatever you want because <laughs> I'm like okay what about the so what happens is a lot of times the instructions they only have so much room they're gonna put what you know they can Excuse me hopefully the hopefully. trickier parts are what is discussed but you know so uh, we'll get to this when we get to this part it's just basically adding your buckle and they gave you a few different buckles so this one's uh, like reinforcement but these two so the two different ways if you want to like put a ribbon in there you know for your handle or if you're just going to use the paper handle you can still put ribbon in this one too just gives you different looks for the um, little area there to hold that so uh, we'll get to that in a little bit so for right now we're gonna focus on this it does say die cut the lid die you know you just need the one unless you want to make it real sturdy but I think you just still need the one so while I'm doing this base stuff I'm gonna cut out what it said which was two of these two of these I will cut out this guy too just to have it and then we'll talk about like everything else when we get there you know as far as the handles so we have this guy and while I'm here I'm going to go ahead and probably cut these from my decorative paper. So it's obviously the outer matte layer, the matte layer for that. And the little topper, you know, maybe you want to use these little words, I don't know. But for now, I am going to use this one just to get a topper layer. Um, again, you have all these different ones that you can layer up and make it look super cute. So whatever it is that you want. But I will pick out some paper from here. So we're going to need two of this, two of this side piece and one of these guys. Um, I know you can also decorate the handle, so we'll have some for that too, but we'll talk about that later, okay? So I will be right back. I wanna show you how I did this so you can get these all, because this is a larger piece, but on a standard A2 size piece of paper, I got both of these off of here, like tuck those in there. But the end piece is too small, right? So on this one, to get like the circle, on this one, I just kind of put it to the side a little bit like this. I don't know if you can see that. And this, so basically the base will take two pieces of paper. I just wanna show you how I laid this out and it worked really well. So if your paper has a pattern um, like that's a certain way or a certain direction, uh, definitely pay attention to that. You're going to want this facing up because when you go to fold this over, you know, it's going to be facing up like this. So the wider area needs to be up top. And then I still have plenty of paper to cut uh, on this one A4 size sheet, right, of the pattern paper. I'll wrap putting up all my dies. There's a slight difference. It's a little bit oval. I don't know if you can see it. It's not like a perfect circle. It's a little bit elongated, like the smallest amount. So, um, really nice. Okay, so they want you to put these two together. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, after we do the two different die cuts, we're going to adhere both the cuts at the base, and then we're going to put in the straps, which uh, I have also ready to go. But before I do that, well, I'll go ahead and do this part. Let's put these guys. How pretty are these? Again, this paper is super sturdy. It's like 350 GSM. This is like 300 GSM. So this is going to be a very sturdy little basket. Um, basically, we're just going to turn them over and glue one to the other, right? And I usually 
do the score lines before you get there. I've been trying to be a good girl and using an actual bone folder. <laughs> uh, so if you like to do that, you know, go for it or just run your finger across however you like to do that. I'm going to go ahead and glue those together. Um, and then I'm going to add my... Um, oh, look at that. Of course it's not ready. Why would it be ready? Uh, let's see here. Just going to poke that right quick. And place that back over here. <laughs> I'm going to place my matte layers because they do need a curve and all that stuff and I'd rather do it now than later on in the process. I usually decorate things afterwards, you guys know how I like to do. But right now I'm going to place this on here. And then of course look on the other side, make sure everything's nice and straight. Looks pretty good. Okay. I like how it's like rounded at the base here. Okay, so that was right sides are down here right I have the ugly like rough cut side facing up right now I guess I can pop that out too and now I'm just going to turn it over while that's setting up I can also add in these pieces right so you know just leave yourself a little bit of area around there and I try to put very minimal glue this is that hunky dory adorable scorable paper and sometimes if your glue has too much water you're going to see it on this other side it warps it a little bit just like metallic papers do I'm pretty sure that's why Hunky Dory has this stuff but this stuff kind of <laughs> drives me a little bit nuts it takes a little while to set up and I don't want to wait for this to set up but um, Zig those kind of I guess those silicone type glues are better so I'll put one on this other side and then of course this pretty thing and I'm just putting the smallest amount of glue like just the littlest and this is art glue anyway that art glitter whatever brand um, you don't need to use too much and when I put it here I'm kind of giving it a little bit of a rub so it kind of isn't just like pulled up in one area that looks pretty good okay and I'll do the same thing with this mat I'll pop it over there and I think with this one we're just gonna put this on here see what I'm saying it's a little bit more ovalish kinda interesting so I'll put this on here And what's kind of interesting is that if you really look up close, I'll show you in just a minute here. Oh, no, too far this way. What am I doing? Um, you can see that little, remember in the die it said it had like a little divot in that one too, so you can line that up and have a good idea of where it would be nice and straight. Okay, I'll add the other two and I'll go back. So we'll put it to the side. We're going to work on this guy. So we're going to turn this over. Look how pretty that is already. And I'll go ahead and put it on here. Hopefully the shimmer or the shine from the paper isn't too bad, but we're going to work with these little straps now. And of course, this is the rough cut side. I'll have rough cut side facing up also, because what you're going to do on step four is adhere the buckle die cuts here. So hopefully you can kind of see this has like a little score line, another double score line, because we're going to loop that over, and then another little score line. So from this score line, there's also a score line on this area. And I'm assuming they're saying to glue it on the inside because that way that gets hidden a little bit. But it's basically overlapping that score to that score. Okay, so score to score line. That's what it looks like. <laughs> right, okay. And then same thing over here. This time I'll put the glue on this. <laughs> and again, I can see the score line, so I'm basically putting it right where it needs to be and a little bit higher up there we go score line score line and oh, this is so interesting the belts go through the side slits as shown so these side slits here I don't know if I'm ready for that yet I'm gonna kind of give this a little bit of a of a curving because again this is adorable scorable it's kind of it's kind of plasticky, but it's definitely sturdy and it has a coating on it. So I'm just going to start curving this because this is basically supposed to curve in like this to match up, right? To this, sorry. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a curve. And I guess it doesn't matter which one goes in or not, but I'm still going to work on this a little bit because I don't want it to kink. I just want it to curve nicely. I got a little bit of a kink right there already. 
basically these two pieces go like this. Isn't that crazy? Oh my gosh, there's a lot of tension because the sturdy the paper is. Okay, then this guy is going to go in here. So I'm lining up those two little areas. This definitely wants to like come away from there. It's like, nope. So we're going to go in here. Very interesting. Oh, I'm not quite ready for that. Ready enough, but not super ready. Look at that. Oh my gosh. <gasps> so sturdy. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to hold it here for just a little bit because I feel like I'm not 100% ready yet. Okay, guys. I said I was going to wait for this to kind of just just kind of sit in place and wait for this to set up. In the meantime, Miranda had brought me over to do other things and I was just thinking about this and what's weird is the instructions are a little odd, okay? Because they're basically telling you to move on and put this thing on and, and, and go ahead and turn this all the way in and do all this weird stuff, right? So once we did that first part, we're supposed to then get this in here, okay? Is what they're showing you here. And here, they're showing you a nice example of what that looks like. So yeah, it goes in here, it goes back up and out, and then you're still supposed to loop it back through again, which is fine, but then they tell you to put the lid on, <laughs> put the lids over here. So there's just several different ways to do this it depends on if you're going to put a lid that's the other thing so they're like oh if you're going to use a lid don't glue the uh straps in it says uh your happy hamper gift box die set comes with an optional lid if you wish for your final product to include this lid then it is recommended you only adhere your belts with a non-permanent product like a magnet or alternatively only adhere on one side of the once the lid has been added i think that's what i'll do kind of weird it it sounds odd um so i'm going to take this part real quick because um, I want to step back even from that. So once you s see that I had looped it around and around, the raw side is out here. So maybe when you glue this little piece, this little strap piece to this base piece, right, how we did here uh, in step four, just turn it around so that it's ugly side touching ugly side in here so that the right side is f actually here, right? Right now the ugly side is here. It should be the nice side here. Then when you flip it around, it'll be the right side will be showing. I don't really care because we're going to also cover it, so I'm not going to take it apart. But it is something to think about. Okay, the other thing is once this is in here, it's going to be kind of squared off, kind of nestled nicely like this. So you can put some glue there if you want to hold it together or or not, but uh, that's up to you. You know, if you want to put a little, little bit of glue in here, it'll hold this area, right? So that's up to you. Um... And what I mean is like on this side too, right? Because we're going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to bring this over, bring this over. Again, we had trained it to be a little bit nice and kind of just go like that, right? So I think maybe I will do that just so that the purse is all together instead of maybe it might open up later. So I'm going to do that on this side. I'm going to hold it. And that means I have to hold it for quite some time because this thing has a lot of tension. And I'm going to take this one out and I'll do the same thing on this side just to have it, okay? So when I come back, I'll have these two sides glued. Um, I will also need one of these little strap things. I think I'm going to make my own strap, so we're going to need this piece. And why don't we use some gold paper? So we're going to grab that. This guy already has its own little thing on it. I might do some. We'll see. We'll see how I end up with working with this. Because I'll tell you one thing I haven't noticed. I haven't noticed anybody that made a sample or even tonic actually open it. Which I thought is weird. I'm like, well, when you open it, how do you actually open it? <laughs> so I've seen people put it, like, you know, they had put it together on Tonic's video a few months back whenever they came out with this. So that's why I recalled right now. I'm like, oh, you know what? I think I want to glue this. Um, we'll, we'll get something going. I'll be so right back. I put little clippies to hold that for me. <laughs> that works. I cut two of these guys out of gold paper so it coordinates. Now... Uh, yeah, these instructions are a little... They, they give you an idea of what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not uh, super, super detailed. Um, okay, so this was the side I think I had started off with, which is fine. So we're going to bring this over, right? And again, just like we did before, we're going to slat this through. And now that it's holding on to itself, I don't have to like fight with that, so that's good. Gluing is good. We're going to bring this through, and this basically needs to come up all the way in. So all the way up as far as it can go in there, right? And then you're supposed to come back around, and there's even a score line there, right? It's going to come back down in that space. But while you're doing that is when you go ahead and add this guy or the pretty, you know, this part. 
So it's very interesting. So it's going to be really sturdy. It's going to be held on really well, but at the same time, kind of interesting. Now, the other thing is this is going to be like this, which is funny because I was telling you guys to pay attention to if your paper has a pat, uh, a way it needs to be. And I don't know why in my mind I thought it was going to be like this. So, I mean, it's fine. Obviously, they're scattered around. It's going to actually be like this. So I think this one goes first. Again, this isn't really detailed in here. They're telling you to go around, loop it around, and then the last time, add it in. You know what I'm saying? That you can go ahead and loop this in. I'll show you right now. Loop this in. And now this time, add your little top part, which to be honest, I kind of prefer. And if we squish this just right, this will be in here. I kind of like the look of that better. Sorry, let me bend that. Um, and then this goes down in here again and then back inside so it has that many revolutions to turn around if that's what you want and at the same time you're supposed to add this little strap piece like this and then your strap is going to add to there and then this is going to lock that in so you're only locked in on the very top piece okay so I'll do it again on the other side just so you have a good idea what that looks like um, but once you close it, if you do the same thing on the other side and you tape this down or glue this down, you're never going to open this again, right? <laughs> because this other one is also glued down. So I'm thinking I kind of want to lop that piece off. I was thinking, what if we just don't use it or don't even include it in the thing or just leave it? So right now we can just kind of leave it out because this will tuck, these little pieces will tuck into these little openings and that'll hold that. And then that way, all you do is open it, you open it up like this, right? So you can actually open the thing. <laughs> And this should hold with the tension, right? Um, and then when we go to do this, instead of, I'll glue this piece down, that's fine. On this side, I won't glue it down. Um, actually, I will glue it down because it's not going to matter anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm thinking out loud, guys, because this is totally different from what they're saying to do. And then also, they just leave it floating there. I'm like, why don't we just glue this one to this one? Right? Glue these two guys together? I don't know. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm gonna go for it. I just feel like why not? I'm gonna glue this one to this piece. I mean they're exactly the same. It feels like a natural thing and so again I'll show you on the other side. Basically you're just continuing to loop this around and around until you're back here. And I'm pulling it nice and tight now because this time I'm not playing around. I'm not messing around. We're gonna put this in here. We're going to put that down right there. And then this last piece, again, there's another score line there. <laughs> it's going to go back inside. And I'm going to glue it on the inside. So there's no coming back from this, guys. Really interesting set. Really cute. It's just I'm, I'm not sure why the instructions are written the way they are. I'm just holding that, guys. I'll show you the same thing in the loop-de-loop -loop on the other side, but again, I'm going to omit this and see if we can just cut it off and just not have it on the other side. We'll still have this gold piece, just not that. Ooh, maybe I'll even just add that to it just to reinforce it. Okay, but well, anyway, for right now, I'm just kind of holding this. You could have put glue out here, too, if you wanted. I did not. Okay. So this piece goes up here, and this is out here. And again, we really want to give this a squish so it takes the shape that it needs, which is this shape. More rounded, right? Okay. Let me get these little clippies off. We don't need those. So on this side, what I was thinking is we go ahead and do what they say, which is to take this, put it in through here, right? Again, next time we do it, we will have the nice side facing in. The nice part of this, see how it's all nice, should be turned around. So we're looking at the ugly side right now. We're going to push that through there. Bring it down in through here. <laughs> Again, down in through here. Back up here. And this time, I'm just going to catch my handle uh, for the straps and not do anything with the other bit. So if I glue this in, it's not dependent on this thing. Do you know what I'm saying? So this can just be here. And this should clip in from these little side clippies. And it'll still hold it down. So if we, because if we were to glue this to here like we did before, um, you can either 
put a little piece of Velcro or something very thin because even Velcro is going to want to not fall. It's going to fall off, right? It's going to get stuck in here when you try to pop that back open to open it up. So it's up to you. If you want to stick this to this and then still loop it through, then when your recipient uses it, it has a little Velcro, you unvelcro it and you pop it out. Um, I think I am going to cut that off. We'll see. I'll take full <laughs> credit for this not working out if it doesn't work out too well. Or you can just leave it there too because it'll help you just kind of push it in there. But I'm just going to lop that off. And that way, our little lid, I'm just going to kind of come around. You know, it's a little rough cut there. And even earlier, they had given you that extra piece, this piece, for um, to make it more sturdy if you wanted to. So what I'm going to do is actually add that to this base piece. Oopsie. Just on the one side. And I'm going to glue this in. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do, guys. And then we'll put our strap on. So now we have this up here. Again, that piece that I just reinforced, the reinforced piece is going to go down in here. And again, back through here, back inside, and glue it on the inside. Let me move this. Okay, my kids are getting excited up there. All right. <laughs> So I completely went off script on that one. I feel like it just didn't make sense. Why were you going to tie it down or, or leave it there? I think what I'm doing makes sense for me, of course. These are all different ways. Of course, the strap has so many different options. I mean, there's different options for everything. So whatever you like to do. We do need tw two of these for the handle, for the handle that I chose. If you're going to put ribbon, you just pop a little piece of ribbon in there and you're good to go. Okay. Um, again, even what they're showing here, if you wanted to put that, tie it here, and then just have a little latch so you don't undo the whole thing, however you want. What they're showing you here is that it was already put through a couple times. <laughs> so you saw that it goes through several times, which is nice and sturdy, but it's also, okay, what's going on, you know? So let's give it that squish. And then we have this. And we're going to pop this guy in here, right? And this guy over here. And of course, we need to make sure our paper is really trained for that. And I mean, look at that, you guys. So again, because this is missing, it's going to want to do its own thing. I'm going to really train it and push it in just so that it doesn't do this. And then we're going to add a strap. So let me cut this piece right here twice. This piece has its own little decorations. You can do whatever you like. There's also a little portion that helps you grab the top if you want. All these decorative pieces, you can layer up. Whatever it is you want to do for the top, but for now basic construction. I'm going to cut two of these from the beige paper and I'll be right back. I just cut these two little pieces here. I will use this piece right here to cut some decorative paper. Well, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But for these side pieces here, you can do that. That's what that's for. This one actually has a decorative piece, but it's really only this piece right here uh, if you want to do that. So it has that texture to it that I didn't use throughout the project, so I'm not going to introduce it now. So um what i can do though is let's go ahead and cut this just so we have that a couple decorative pieces and then this little circle that's in here it cuts a fun little kind of interesting thing what i'll do with this one is i'll run it through the gold oh i'm peeling the back of my nail off there <laughs> i use my nail and it's coming off i'll just use that so we have some gold okay and then oh, this one from actually, the pattern paper. you know what i'm not gonna i was gonna say i'll cut this from pattern paper but you know what i think it looks cuter in the gold just so it goes with the stuff so i'll cut the two of these from gold and one of this from okay, the gold yes. right so we have our pieces here i have just a couple of decorations oh you know i suppose i can also show you how to make one of the beads okay and so again, I'm kind of gone off script at this point, but uh, cut this die twice to create your handle for your hamper, and then you just use the handles, glue tabs to adhere to the buckle. So these guys have a little score line right there, right there, and so basically it goes in here and it just glues on. So if you want to glue it completely or just like a little bit, but I'll do the same thing for the other side. Just add that on, sorry, <laughs> this way, and glue that down. And then we're going to glue them to on top of each other up here, okay? I'll be right back. Okay. So, again, unless I'm missing something, this is probably the first time I've had to, like, do something to uh, a tonic item to make it work a little, a little more like what I would think. Again, unless you want to put, like, a magnet or something so that you can still unhook one side and slide it off, um, that's up to you, of course. 
There we go. And then this guy closes where I was, up. but I was definitely going to glue this down. And then I thought, wait, if I glue this down, <laughs> we still can't open it, right? So can't do that with this one. If you're going to do ribbon, I would say put a really long, long, long ribbon. But for right now, what I'm going to do is just cut down a Velcro. So again, very interesting set. Definitely takes a little something and some idea of what it is that you want to do. Um, so I'm gonna again stick that down. This is just cheap Velcro from the Dollar Tree, but if you want to put like the magnets that Tonic sells, that'd probably be nicer. So I'm gonna put that one on top of the other, and then I'm just gonna glue this little bit. I ran this through the marquee, so to get the embossing, I just uh, added another piece of paper behind there. So there's a black piece of paper still stuck on here. Hold on. There we go. And we'll put this on there. That's very cute. So I'm going to hold that down, and then I'm going to take my little gold pieces and add them here. Okay? Just glue one on one side, glue on the other, and I'll be right back. Just adding this piece here. So, of course, as I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, I'm like, what can I do next time? I think next time, what I would do is maybe make it so that this piece can go up and down the strap. Does that make sense? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, this same little loop that's here, make it, don't stick it to this part. <laughs> I don't know how to make, to make sense of that. But if it's up here on the strap, you can kind of lift it up and down, and then that way it still stays where it's supposed to, but um, but it's functional, right? So that's what we're always looking for, function. So here it is, uh, a really nice size. Again, I was curious because um, I just hadn't seen anyone open one. So I was like, well, how do you open it? So three and three quarters by three and three quarters. Like It's kind of a square base. It is like three inches tall. And I am going to think about this a little bit more, but for now, this is what we have. Again, these little pieces should kind of like sink in. I don't know how to explain it. Like this little area that's kind of open there is supposed to kind of go in like that. But I think also the paper I use, since it's so thick, it just doesn't want to let me manipulate it too much. So, well, anyway, there it is. Tried it out. Again, this is the very first time I ever had to do anything different than the instructions so that we can actually open it. Um... But that's what I came up with. And let me know if you have it and what you've done for a closure, you know, so that you can still open it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll have the links in the description box. I'll have images coming up, and I will see you guys at the next one. Bye now. Mm -hmm.